Good morning all. More printed circuit boards from JLC PCB. Let's take a look at what's in here. And well, it's a white board and it's actually the little link board that goes on my breadboard computer. Let's get this one out of its packaging and see whether this is going to work. Because the idea of this is to solve some of the sort of um, poor connections that I'm getting on the breadboard computer. Well, because it's breadboard, really. So five uh, boards here, or at least five panels. These are panelized. How many did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven by six. Six sevens are 42, I believe. Let's see how well these break off. Yep, these are V-scored. Hmm, perhaps I'll go the other way just for the moment. Okay, I'll break this down to one piece and I'll get it on my breadboard. Here's my breadboard and see whether it helps with the power distribution. So the idea is that this PCB replaces these links here, these four links. But it does more than that because it uh, not only does it link across that way, but it also links uh, across this way. So this positive links to this positive, this negative links to this negative. So it also replaces these two links because you can see that those are linking uh, this bus bar with this bus bar. So it does all of that and provides some pinouts or some pads here for an additional power connector. So I need some uh, DuPont headers, but I can break these into pairs. Now, normally when I solder these headers into the board, I actually put them in a breadboard to kind of get all the alignments and positions right. So probably what I'll do is break these into pairs, put them into these positions, lower this board down on top and then solder. That seems like the sensible way to do it. So let's do this set of four links first. I'll lift these links out. And then my little board, so I've got all the dimensions right so that it fits in there. Plug these things in as pairs of pos and neg connectors. That sits in there quite close to that tantalum capacitor, but it should be okay. And now, is this going to be upright? I guess actually this could be either way around, doesn't really matter. It's kind of ambidextrous. So my pitch across here, I'm not sure I've got this quite right. It does seem a little bit small, but the problem with these breadboards is that they're not entirely straight. You can see that the whole thing, uh, can you see it better that way? I'm not sure it's visible, but it is slightly banana shaped. And it doesn't sit flat on the desk. The whole thing rocks about because it is all slightly warped. But it it, uh, it does fit. The pins go into the breadboard. I can solder that and we'll see whether it does actually help. Right, let's solder these um, pins into the board. And see whether it makes a good connection. So eight pins. Now it does look like I can only fit two of these onto these six boards because there's only two positions where they fit fully uh, to connect all the boards together. But of course you can also partially assemble these with pins and put them there and on this end and on that end. So I can fit them in other places than just these two mid positions. So let's just complete the soldering of this one and at least make sure we've got power distribution on there. So first things first let's just uh, make sure it actually works at all. I'll just put some power on here because I've got uh, convenient connecting points switch on and yeah and actually this was really dim this one and that's got a fair bit brighter so actually that's that's helped already Now I'm going to make up um, a half made up one and put it here and hopefully that'll help this even more. Yeah, I'm quite encouraged now. 
Well, now this blue one has dimmed right down again, and I don't really know why. I can't actually find where the problem is with power distribution somewhere around here. I'm just going to take this out for a moment because this link here is consuming one of the four holes that I want to uh, connect with this little board. So I just want to make a new link. It has to sit in this end hole here because it runs down across here. This is a grounding link down to the bottom here. But I just want to uh, angle it in that way a little bit. Right, that's done that. So now let's break off another couple of pairs of these. And I'll put them in the board where they're going to go, which is there and here, if I can get that to fit in there. And then my board is going to straddle that. If we can get that to fit. Uh, the DuPont head has fit fairly tight in these holes, so it is a little bit of a fiddle getting them lined up and pressing this over. And as I say, I think I've got a slight dimensional error here. It doesn't matter too much because everything can be sort of bent and moved and adjusted. Right, I'm going to solder this one live, see if anything happens when I solder it. Oh, did that light brighten up a bit? I don't know, really. Okay, that's that one done. Yeah, it might have made a little bit of difference. Maybe not a huge amount. And uh, for this one down here, I think I'm going to have to... I'll probably pull that white wire out. Of course, that's going to stop uh, the uh, address decoder from working. And I think I'm going to power it off, take these out, and I'll probably have to get to it from this angle. So let's do that one. Uh, take these four links out. So you see, this board not only replaces these four links, but it replaces any links which bridge uh, the two power buses together. So it replaces these two links as well. And actually these two here, which on these ones I put coloured um, uh, insulators on there. So yes, it replaces those as well. So it does more than what these four links do on their own. Right, let's get these links into these positions. In there. Of course, I'm going to find I've got... Uh, bus bars where I can't actually push that in. That's going to need fiddling with a little bit. Let's put them in with the pliers. Oh yeah, they do go in. It's just that these pins are quite fat in relation to the wire links I had. And sometimes they just touch onto the top of the little connector in the bus bar. And they won't immediately drop in. Okay, so we get the same orientation, uh, that one as this one. Okay, that's that one in. Let's solder these eight pins. So I've got plenty of these things. Um, it was six sevens, wasn't it? 42, and I've got five panels, so that's about... Uh, well, it's over 200 of these little link boards. I don't know whether this computer is going to grow quite to the, that size, but uh, anyway, I'm not going to run out. Uh, I didn't really uh, make a note of where that wire went. It definitely goes to the clock, and I've got a feeling it goes to pin 6 on that address decoder, so let's try that. So I switch on and this blue one has come up really bright now. Is that all just due to this link board that I've put in? What tends to happen is it seems to just fade over time. I don't quite know why. But yeah, I do think that's helped. We'll see whether this stays brightly lit over time. It doesn't make sense that it dims out over time, but that's what seems to happen. I've just changed these batteries actually because I was a bit concerned that they may be a bit low so these are all freshly charged yeah so this has kind of gone dim again there are a couple of blues up here which you can barely see and if I kind of fiddle around with this lift that up a bit 
you can see I can get that bright again. Fiddle around with this one, which is a bit more difficult because it's kind of embedded in there. And you get this bright and dim thing. So it's all about power distribution on here. Now there was one other function of this board and that is that I can put a connector on here and actually bridge across there for even more power distribution. So these were the connectors I bought. They're on a 0.1 inch uh, pitch matrix, 0.1 between the pins and 0.2 across there. And I put some pads on here to take this. Uh, I've just discovered actually that that won't quite sit flat on the board. I'll show you why not. Yeah, so it slightly fouls these pins on this side and also these pins on this side. Seems that this is uh, symmetrical. These are splayed out a little bit actually and they're also splayed out a little bit that way. I think I slightly underestimated the dimensions on here. So possibly if I slightly increase this dimensioning this could sit flat. But it doesn't actually matter that it doesn't sit flat. Those pins are far enough through that I can solder them on there. And then that also gives me the possibility to drop a wire in here. You just pull this lever down drop a wire in here and bridge it across to this other one, giving even more power distribution. There's my iron on, yes it is. So I'll just put that on some blue tack. I can solder that. Uh, slightly tricky, but doable. Solder all these connections. Bit of a shame that because it obscures all my silk screen. Uh, oh well, never mind. So I plug that back in there. It's still working actually, even without that there. There must be other connections. But put that back in. Does this brighten up? Yes, it does. And then if I put the connector in this one as well, I can actually put some bridging power links in there, maybe with some red and black wires. So that's another one made up. Let's just poke that back in there. Yeah, that's definitely helping keeping these uh, LEDs bright. But now, and I won't do it with red and black wires, I'll just do it with these blue. Got to be careful I get this right. That top one will be positive. Uh, oh, let's go quite deep, don't we? And that will go onto that one. I should use the screwdriver really for that. But uh, yeah, you can put an additional wires on to bridge uh, the power between rows. Not quite the right screwdriver but now which one would it be? I can do the bottom one I suppose. Let's put that one in there. Bottom on this one that should be the correct thing. And I just think that's helping isn't it to distribute power between all the various parts. This is about the brightest I've ever seen it I think. And this LED here. Yeah, that actually is really helping. Um, I'll just reboot it. It tends to boot with these RAMs having a pattern in them, which kind of makes it do something, but it's not writing to that. Sometimes you can just get lucky and it boots in such a way that it actually writes data to this, but you do have to get lucky. Let's try it again. No, it's not going to do it, but the data is in there. You can see the clock running and you can see the patterns changing but I don't think I've ever seen these displays quite as bright as they are now so I think that's really worked I think my little breadboard bridging and distribution uh, little PCB is going to help it's going to help quite a lot actually I never thought about this at the time but um, I've just realized of course that these are positive negative positive negative so you can actually daisy chain these. I could take the top pos and neg on this one, put it on the bottom pos, pos and neg on this one. They're bridged together on the PCB, but it means that you can have a sort of ripple daisy chain between all of the ones on the system. Didn't design that, but it's worked out really well. So I'll just redo these to use that uh, feature. Oh, I need my screwdriver. So this neg, Oh, I need to lever that. Put that one in there. Is that blown up? No, it hasn't. Take that 
pause out from the top and put it in to the second one up. And yeah, you can see that um, I can now daisy chain these on to other boards. And if I get a continuous sort of line running round, I can daisy chain that round the whole breadboard. I'm really pleased with this. Uh, just one thing that I wanted to mention, which I don't think I've mentioned. This was originally a bipolar 555, but since I've replaced all the chips with CMOS, uh, they're all 74HC now, I thought I'd put a 7555 in here so that it is also CMOS. And it didn't work with the 1K resistors on the normally open and normally closed of this switch going to uh, pos and neg or 5 volts and 0 volts, I had to reduce those in value to 100 ohms. It just seems that the 7555 CMOS couldn't quite be pulled off and on with the 1K resistors, so 100 ohms seems to work. It just simply pulls pin 2, which is the positive of the capacitor, uh, through this switch, either to 0 volts or 5 volts. So if you stop the clock running, with that, that just links through to this, then you can single step it using that micro switch. So if you go to CMOS, these need to be reduced from 1K to 100 ohms. So yeah, I'm very pleased with my uh, little breadboard linking PCB. Uh, I'm quite glad I made uh, a lot of these now. So I've got four more panels of them there. Um, it didn't look at first like it was going to make a huge amount of difference, but the more of these things you put in, and of course linking them together, you just get better power distribution. It just gets better and better. So actually, I think this has been a result. Excellent. Cheerio.